What's up guys, Smalls here from 9 to 5 mac and if you're a fan of good ideas, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future content like this. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the recently announced iPhone 14 Plus and iPhone 14 Pro Max. For the first time ever, Apple has two new plus size iPhones launching within the same year. So today let's compare these two on paper and see which one is gonna be a better buy for you before it's time to put in that order on Friday. Outside of the bigger size, the iPhone 14 Plus is gonna come with more or less the exact same design as the current iPhone 13. So you're getting the dual back cameras, aluminum frame, and notch design. So don't expect anything new for the 14 Plus compared to the 13 models. It's pretty much an enlarged iPhone 13. The 14 Pro Max, on the other hand, is largely the same as the 13 Pro Max in terms of the design, except for when you turn it on. You'll notice that the notch housing the Face ID sensor and selfie camera has been eliminated for what Apple is calling the dynamic island, because Apple is not gonna allow people to call this a pill or a cutout, so they gotta put the marketing team to work and come up with a name that's almost an oxymoron to the design itself. Itself. And it's more than just a design feature, it's integrated into all the main things that you actually do with the phone now. So air dropping files, connecting headphones, things of that nature, the dynamic island will seemingly play into all of that. You've also got slightly larger camera lenses on the back and the body is just 0.2 millimeters thicker just to make sure you can't use the same cases again. But outside of that, the design is more or less the same as last year's Pro model. So with either device, you're not really getting a drastically different design compared to last year's flagship. But the 14 Pro Max is gonna be the one to buy if you want the most different looking iPhone this year. The iPhone 14 Plus and Pro Max have the same 6.7 inch screen size, but there's some pretty noticeable differences between the two in terms of the overall display quality and performance. In terms of pure resolution, the 14 Pro Max has a pretty negligible advantage compared to the 14 Plus, but of course the 14 Max gets the ProMotion feature, which means you're getting double the maximum refresh rate, which results in a super smooth experience. It's definitely one of those things you have to see in person to appreciate. Both iPhones feature bright HDR displays, but the 14 Pro Max has a notably more capable panel with 1,000 nits of peak brightness, 1,600 nits of peak brightness for HDR, and 2,000 nits of peak brightness when outdoors. The 14 Plus only has 800 nits of full brightness and 1,200 nits of peak brightness for HDR. So for HDR content and brightness performance in general, the 14 Pro Max is definitely gonna be the way to go. The 14 Pro Max also uses an always on display feature, which is a first for the iPhone. This means that unless your iPhone is face down or in your pocket, the screen will always be on in a dim state so that you can always glance at notifications and widgets. And if this feature is a must have, then you're gonna wanna get a 14 Pro or Pro Max because the standard 14s are not gonna get it. The 14 Plus is utilizing the same A15 Bionic chip that's found in last year's 13 models. So outside of a new internal design for better thermal management, the performance of the 14 Plus will be extremely close to the 13 and 13 Pro. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing as the A15 Bionic is still a class leading smartphone processor, but it is disappointing to see if you were expecting a noticeable power gain with the non-pro iPhone this year. The 14 Pro Max features the new A16 Bionic chip, which has the same amount of performance and efficiency cores, the same five core GPU, and the same 16 core neural engine. But this time around, the A16 is based on a four nanometer process. So while we're not expecting crazy gains overall in terms of power, the efficiency in which that power is delivered should be improved, which of course helps out the battery life. The camera system is also an area where you're gonna see some big differences between these two models. The camera system on the 14 Plus is going to be largely the same as the 13's camera setup. You've got the same dual camera lens design, but the 14 Plus is now going to get two times better low light performance for all of the cameras according to Apple. In terms of video feature, the 14 Pros and the 14 Plus are gonna come with a feature called action mode that smooths out handheld videos. Both the 14 Plus and 14 Pro Max are gonna get autofocus functionality for the selfie camera as well, and with a slightly improved aperture of f1.9. And another feature coming to both iPhones is 4K 24 FPS video support in cinematic mode. Previously, you could only record cinematic videos in 1080p, so it's nice to see that update. The 14 Pros come with an all new 48 megapixel main camera with a quad pixel sensor, so you can expect the level of detail taken in your photos on the main camera to be dramatically increased. And because of this quad pixel tech, there's now a 2x zoom option added to the range, but outside of a slightly improved flash LED, the new 48 megapixel sensor is really the only new feature that's exclusive to the 14 Pro and Pro Max. Everything else is coming to the entire 14 lineup. In terms of the battery life, we don't have confirmation on the actual milliamp hour count of the batteries themselves, but overall the 14 Pro Max on paper should be less than 10% better than the 14 Plus in terms of battery performance. The 14 Pro Max is rocking a four nanometer chip, which could greatly benefit the battery life, but with the 14 Plus having the less bright display, there's a chance that the 14 Plus could have a real world battery life that's equally as good as the Pro Max, maybe slightly better, but we'll just have to see during the full review. Both of these iPhones will get the emergency SOS feature, which will allow you to contact emergency services over satellite in the event of an emergency situation. 
detection. And both iPhones will also come with crash detection, which enables the phones to detect impacts of a certain level and allow you to conveniently contact emergency responders. Outside of that, the only remaining differences between these two devices is the price tag. The 14 Plus starts at $899 with 128 gigs of storage, while the 14 Pro Max starts at $1099 with 128 gigs of storage. And so there's only a $200 cost to upgrade to the best version of Apple's large iPhone. And I think that's an interesting choice for a lot of people to make, given the fact that most people finance or buy these phones on contract, the difference in monthly cost between these two is gonna be pretty marginal. So for an extra $200, you're getting a third camera lens with pro photo and video features, a brighter, smoother, and more display-filled screen, a better build, and a faster processor. So. I guess it's really up to you to decide whether those features are worth an extra $200 or if you'll be more than satisfied with what the 14 Plus offers. Cause while it's not a massive upgrade over the 13, it's still a really solid phone on paper and one that a lot of people are definitely gonna consider. But I hope this video helped in making your decision on which iPhone you're gonna order this Friday. Between the entire nine to five Mac team, we're gonna be ordering all of these phones. So we can provide you guys with the full review, comparisons and all that good stuff. So let us know in the comments down below which iPhone you're thinking of ordering if you're thinking of ordering it all and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe for future content like this because we've got a bunch of stuff coming this month thank you guys for watching and i'll talk to you guys in the next one